Welcome to yet another monologue on the STEER platform. I am Dr. Sridhar Ganpati, a practicing pediatrician from Mumbai. And the topic for the day is indigestion. What is indigestion? The symptomatology of indigestion. What is normal digestion? So that we understand what is indigestion. The red flags that will make you refer a case with indigestion to the super specialist. An approach to indigestion. Tipsters to prevent indigestion. And very little on therapeutics because of the limitation of time. So what is indigestion? Indigestion is nothing but inadequate digestion or maldigestion. The layman calls it an upset tummy. The gastroenterologist will give it a name called dyspepsia or bad digestion. And under this umbrella term, you have symptoms ranging from nausea, vomiting, retching, epigastric burning, retrosternal burning, epigastric discomfort, and early satiety during a meal, borborgmi, passing a lot of gas, loose motion, constipation, and it goes on. In order to understand indigestion, we need to know that there are three main factors that contribute to indigestion. One is the process of digestion, which we need to understand. Then comes the diet. And then the last one is the exposure. So when we talk about the process of digestion, it's basically a means by which a complex food is broken by the host into easily assimilable, absorbable nutrients. And it's an interplay of many things. So it starts off in the oral cavity and ends at the anus. And you have a mechanical digestion in the form of mastication, chewing, peristalsis, propulsion, mixing. You have a chemical digestion in the form of the diet encountering the alkali in the oral cavity, in the small intestine, the acid in the stomach, and the enzymatic digestion. It starts off in the oral cavity, the salivary amylase, the lingual lipase, the pepsinogen getting converted to pepsin in the stomach, the pancreatic enzymes, the brush border enzymes, the enterocytes, all contributing enzymes for digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, lipids. What escapes digestion is digested by the microbiota. And this digestion is equally important. They contribute almost 50% of the digestion. They break down the unbreakable items into peptides, amino acid, vitamins, short chain fatty acid, which have generated so much of interest, especially the butyrates, which are needed for the integrity of the barrier, as well as for the energy of colonocytes. And most of these metabolites have distal functions, not just at the level of the intestine, but distal functions. So any aberration in this can give rise to indigestion. Then comes the diet factors. The diet factors is cooked, how you cook it, processed, ultra processed, how you eat it and the combos. Eating too fast, using a straw to drink liquids, promotes aerophagia and can give rise to indigestion. Stressful environment and you're trying to eat, not syncing with the biological clock, eating at unearthly hours, all can give rise to indigestion. So it's not just the quality, the quantity, but even other factors that promote indigestion. Storage. When you talk about the exposome, in a place like Bombay where it is hot and humid, the stability is an issue. Storage and staleness. And the last thing that we need to understand is we keep implicating diet for everything. But we need to understand the comorbidities that the host carries. So it could be a diabetes with a gastroparesis, an autonomic neuropathy, 
which is causing indigestive symptoms or it could be hypothyroidism giving rise to symptoms of indigestion. What are the red flag signs? Odinophagia, dysphagia, bilious vomiting, sanguineous vomiting, extreme discomfort soon after a meal, retrosternal burning which is excruciating, having to run to the toilet after eating certain food items could be a intolerance or could be an immune mediated reaction. All this requires referral. Affection of growth, macro and micronutrient deficiency, they require referral. Now let's go to the approach to a case of indigestion. So the approach can be acute, chronic, Organic, functional, acute, episodic. You have a binge during the festivity and get indigestion. You know the cause for it. Short lasting and you come out within a week's time. You have an illness, you take a course of antibiotics. You take NSAIDs. Again, this could be episodic, you come out of it. But sometimes the aberration in the microbiota could take a lot of time. Episodic, recurrent, you start implicating a particular item in food. It could be the chips with the sulfur in it or the sulfite in it. It could be the milk causing your lactose intolerance. It could be the raw egg causing your problems. So even systemic manifestation in the form of sneezing, itching, urticaria. Episodic, recurrent. Then you have recurrent with macro micronutrient deficiencies. Could be a celiac, a cystic fibrosis, could be a peptic ulcer disease, could be giardiasis. You have chronic without any growth aberrations, but affecting quality of life three times in a week, more for more than three months epigastric discomfort, postpandial discomfort, retrosternal burning, functional GI disorder. There is no aberration in growth. So that is how you approach a case of indigestion. In therapeutics, the main thing to be discussed is prevention. And in prevention, we follow the mnemonic to see FSI. You add the word two or the number two. Too much of food, too little, too spicy, too salty, too fried, too fast. You're eating too fast. You're eating too much of ultra processed food. All these are prescriptions for indigestion. When you come to C, it is associated with drinks, carbonated, citrated, chocolatey, Caffeinated, in addition to alcohol, can all give rise to indigestive symptoms. Then you come to the F in the FSI. You need adequate fluid and fiber in your diet to prevent indigestion. And you don't eat fast. It should be mindful eating and you don't multitask. So you shouldn't be eating and talking, eating and singing. It should be only eating at one time. Then you go to S. S stands for sleep, stress, storage. You require adequate sleep. You require a stress-free environment. And your food, food habit should sync with your biological clock. And storage and staleness. Then comes I, iatrogenic. Anything which is an irritant like an NSAID a bronchodilator like theophylline, a multivitamin like iron, and the list is long, can give rise to symptoms of indigestion. And the last is please. So it is to see FSI, please. Please restrict pickle, pepper, pasta, pizza. Then comes definitive therapeutics. 
Here we have rescue medications like Ondansetron for the nausea, retching. We have Cymeticon for the bloating sensation and antacids. And for the hyperchloridria, which is not usually an issue, but the symptomatology like retrosternal burning, the PPIs, the H2 blockers, with a word of caution that you require acid for conversion of pepsinogen to pepsin, and acid is the first line of defense for your GIT. And if you take it on a long-term basis, you are developing hypergastrinemia. So when you stop all of a sudden, the symptoms will return all of us. In functional GI disorders, you know it's a, it's a gut-brain axis, which, is, which may be at fault. And there is a visceral hypersensitivity or your perception of pain and discomfort is much more. So you may require behavioral therapy and some drugs working on this gut-brain axis. A lot of home remedies are used. Dill oil, fennel oil, that is sofen as wine, ginger and turmeric, peppermint, that is pudina, ajwine, and all these things are extremely beneficial. So the whole purpose of this monologue today is you need to understand to treat. Preventive medicine comes to the fore. Rationalize your therapeutics and use a big chunk of common sense. Thank you.